So I'm presenting this paper along with Dr. Yu. Um, it's basically case studies of a couple of patients that had cervical arthroplasty using MOBI-C and their failures and reasons as to why that might have happened. So first, um, just going over, there's a long-term study using MOBI-C, comparing it to artificial disc re replacement to fusion. And yeah, that study showed that artificial disc replacement at one level and fusion at one level have similar success rates. Uh, when compared to two levels, they found that the artificial disc is superior. Moving on to the case studies. The first patient was a 34-year-old male who had C5 and C67 disc herniations leading to compression at the area. Um, so this patient was, rel was pretty young, so Dr. Yu chose to preserve spine mobility and go with the artificial discs. Around one month following this patient's operation, he started complaining of severe neck pain, and this progressively got worse and eventually led to paralysis in his left side. Um, in October, in January 2017, um, x-rays were taken and they show um, the artificial disc had shifted left. And so basically two years after his artificial disc surgery, the patient had the discs removed and there were, those levels were fused instead. The next study was a 50-year-old female who already had a history of fusion in her neck uh, she came in complaining of left-sided neck pain um, and pain radi radiating to her fingers. Um, we see her preoperative MRI shows that she has some compression at the C4 level. Her facets were good, and this along with her already previous history of fusion, Dr. Yu decided to proceed with artificial disc displacement to preserve motion. Um, so this patient had C4-5 artificial disc replacement in May 2017 using MOBI-C, and initially, immediately post-op, the disc placement looked really good. Three months post-op, the patient started complaining of neck pain and said that she developed it while she was cleaning. She described her disc as needing lubrication. We looked at other x-rays, new x-rays of her spine, and again, it showed that the discs had migrated to the left. Um, this patient, again, one year following her surgery, had the discs removed and under, underwent fusion in that level. So this, these were doctor used patients, and we also found two other patients in the literature that had artificial disc replacement using MOBI-C. The first patient was a 15-year-old female, came in with neck pain, had stenosis at C5-6 and C6-7. She underwent hybrid um, one-level ADR and one-level fusion. So in the three-month follow-up, they found that her discs um, at the level of the disc there was actually hyper hypermobility. They had this occur with another patient as well. This was a 47-year-old female, underwent one level ADR, and she showed 15.6 degrees of focal hypermobility at a six-week follow-up. So these physicians proposed that this might be because during the ADR procedure, the PLL and the ALL are cut out and basically that destabilized the spine and the ADR would, in the ADR procedure, and the MOBI-C is already minimally constrained, and that can basically lead to hypermobility. Um, we propose that this might possibly also be the reason that Dr. Yu saw the disc shift in his patients. Um, and of course, it can also be because the discs were poorly placed. Uh, we are open to other surgeons that possibly also have see seeing this occur in their patients, and would a uh, more constrained ADR be a better solution? Um, and then we're basically bringing this back to the Sherite lumbar disc, which was also minimally constrained and showed a lot of surgical failure. 